Now ask any aviation geek what they think about when you say the word St. Martin and they'll probably tell you this. <laughs> That's flipping awesome, isn't it? This is, of course, Juliana Airport in St. Martin. It's a mecca for plane spotters from around the world. Just the mention of the name is enough to send us stirring into the loins of anyone who's ever called themselves an aviation geek. But it's not the only airport on St. Martin. In fact, there's another one not far from here that I think is potentially even cooler than Juliana. So, right about now, I'm about to cross the only land border anywhere in the world between France and the Netherlands. And there we go. Welcome to the French side. So I'm now in the French side of the island. Everything's written in French. Now, aside from having an absolutely dreadful road conditions here in the French side of the island, they also have their own airport. It's called Grand Cass Airport. It's a quite a small airport. It only serves a couple of destinations, so Pointe Pitre in Guadeloupe and also St. Bart's. But it's really unique in the fact that the runway is so short that aircraft have to reverse down the runway to take off. It's the only airport in the world where they have to do that. So we're going to go and have a look at it and later we're going to fly out of there as well. Right behind me then is the runway here at Grand Cass Airport. It kind of sticks out into a lagoon very much like that. And the aircraft come in in front of this beautiful mountain here and touch down, slam down and basically all the anchors on to stop running off the other end of the runway. When they take off, of course, it's a different matter. The runway is too short for them to use half the runway. So they've got a power back manoeuvre to reverse the aircraft right down to the very tip of the runway before they can then power up and take off. It's all pretty cool, isn't it? Here he is doing his backtrack. He's flipping round now to point the right way down the runway. And then watch what happens next. There he goes, reversing to get the entire length of the runway. And now we'll do a short take, short field takeoff. And off he goes. There we go, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Watching him take off, doing that little reverse maneuver. We're gonna go and get on board one and see for ourselves what it's like to be on board that power back maneuver to reverse down the length of the runway here at Grand Cass. So this then is the terminal building here at Grand Cass Airport on St. Martin. It's a, quite a small place, home to a few chickens running around or hens or whatever they're called, um, trotting around the car park. It's quite a compact little airport. Let's head inside and see what it's like inside. Aside from the roosters trotting around, the terminal at Grand Cass features a small cafe, a couple of check-in desks and, well, that's about it really. No, all good. Thank you. Cheers. There's a pretty laid-back security inspection before you enter the small departure lounge where you get a good view of the ramp action. This Cessna caravan was bringing in the mail from Guadeloupe. As you can see by the weather, St Martin was once again resembling Fort William rather than the Caribbean today. Now Grand Cass Airport is predominantly served by Air Caribs, but there's also an airline called Air Antilles Express who fly in here, there's one of their planes out there right now, and St Bart Commuter who fly to St Bart's also fly in here with caravans as well. The biggest aircraft here is the ATR-72, which is the one I'm going on today. Air Antilles also send an ATR-42 in as well, so it's all little turboprop planes to connect St Martin with all the other islands in this part of the world. Pretty soon there was the distinctive sound of an ATR on its way in and my ATR-72 arrived in from her flight from Guadeloupe. This one was delivered less than a year ago, brand new from Toulouse, after undertaking a phenomenal ferry flight via Cape Verde in Brazil. Yeah. 
Cool. Now, Aircarabes have their ATRs fitted with these rather uncomfortable bench seats, much like a bus, but for the length of flight they operate, it's difficult to complain too much. It was time to taxi out and experience one of the most unique takeoffs in the world. Once we'd held short for the departing iguana, that was. At first, the backtrack from Grand Cast seems fairly normal, but once you've spun around, that's when it starts to get fun. The runway has these two markings for the pilots to know how far back to reverse, one for the ATR-72 and one for the shorter ATR-42. Just look how far back we have to reverse, the main landing gear is almost touching the grass with the tail of the plane well over the grass. Now it was time to see just how fast we used up this incredibly short runway. another flight safely airborne for the flight down to Guadeloupe. Our route down to Guadeloupe today then took us south from St Martin, flying past St Kitts, Antigua and Montserrat before our approach and landing into Point of Petra. Flight time today was 40 minutes, cruising at 13,000 feet. Flight down to Guadeloupe offers some stunning views over the tropical islands down below. Sadly, we couldn't see any of those today due to the low cloud and rain, but I did spot a cloud that looked a little bit like somebody pulling the V sign. As I tried to take in these magnificent views, I couldn't help but think about this video sponsor, Dashlane. Dashlane makes it super easy to securely store all of your passwords, cards and important documents and access them on the go. It allows you to quickly generate a unique, highly secure password for each website you visit and auto fills them on your devices so you never have to remember a password again. It's far more secure than reusing that same password with different numbers at the end over and over again. It also makes it really easy to fill in your card details whenever you make an online purchase, which is really handy for me as I can just click and fill in my card details without having to go rooting through my wallet. Aside from the cards, it stores things like your passport, so wherever I am in the world, I can just open up the app and pull down my passport details. Great for when I'm trying to check in online or apply for e-visas when they need to know every last tiny detail of your life. So try the exclusive offer of getting Dashlane for free on your first device at dashlane.com slash and then when you want to upgrade to premium, which I think you will, use my code NOL to get 25% off. The rain did stop a bit just before our landing into Guadeloupe though and we made an approach and landing into Pointe Petra Airport. If you've enjoyed this video don't forget to check out my previous video flying to the incredible island of St Bart's and having a go at landing a plane there myself. Um, it, it didn't end well. Um, the link's on the screen now. I had just a 35 minute connection here in Guadeloupe to my onward flight back to Europe. I was pretty nervous about whether I'd make it, but it turned out I needn't have worried. From stepping off the ATR to stepping onto the A350 for my flight to Paris took an incredible 7 minutes, making it the fastest and most efficient transfer I've ever accomplished. Oh, and my bags even made it too, so well done Air Carabes. Thanks so much for watching this video, take care and I'll see you next time.